Hey YouTube, Kira Twig here, bringing you all an update to my Magistus Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile for March 2024. The Magistus deck is a pretty awesome deck that utilizes the many different spellcasters in the lineup and being able to use the equip power that they have to then go into many different fusion, synchro, exceeds, or even link forms that we can make use of in the extra deck. I've, it's been a while since I've you know actually done an update to the Magistus or Magistus Magistus is that how it's pronounced I'm guessing maybe who knows but like I said I'm happy with the results of the deck trying to stick to as pure of a version of the Magistus deck as I could so let's go ahead and get started with the deck profile so we'll go ahead and start off with the main deck monsters for the Magistus monsters I'm running three copies of uh, Riliona the Magistus of Ver if this card's normal or special you can activate one of these effects. You can add one Magistus Spell or Trap from your deck to your hand, or return one of your banished level 4 lower spellcaster monsters to your graveyard, and you can banish this card from your graveyard to target one Magistus monster you control. Equip it with one Magistus monster from your graveyard, except the level 4 monster. You can only use each of the effects of Riliona, the Magistus of Vare, once per turn. So the only non-level 4 monsters that we run in the form of Magistus monsters are the extra deck monsters. So going into these extra deck monsters is the main play that we want to utilize in the deck but still our Riliona can help with that setup with just its search and return power that it can make use of when normal or special summoned and we're also running three copies of Zoroa the Magistus of Flame you can target one Magistus monster you control equip it with one Magistus monster from your extra deck if this card becomes equipped with a Magistus monster you can special summon one level four spellcaster monster card and then with this card being able to special summon the level four spellcaster from your hand or graveyard in defense except for Zoroa but its effects are negated so even though its effects are negated it's really you know not important because your Zoroa is a level 4 tuner so the monster you summon out can either be used for an Xyz play or a fusion play or a synchro play depending on what you want to go into with this just being an easy resource for the special summon of that monster being able to have the equipped card with a Magistus card if this card being able to target a Magistus monster and equip it from the the extra deck and then just gaining the additional effect of our Magistus of Flame if you equip itself. And for the last of the three ofs for the Magistus Monsters, three copies of Endymion, the Magistus of Mastery. You can target one Magistus Monster Control, equip it with one Magistus Monster. I'm going to go back and forth between the pronunciation of these cards. I just don't know what's the correct one or if they're both correct, if it's a tomato, tomato sort of scenario. With this card, you can target one Monster you Control, equip it with one Magistus Monster from your extra deck. You can target a face-up spell you control, destroy, if you do draw one card, then place one card from your hand on the bottom of your deck. You can only use each effect of Endymion, the Master of Magistry, one per turn so whether it be your face of continuous spell which is our Tris Magistus or just being able to make use of the equip again targeting Magistus monster control and equip it with a Magistus monster from your extra deck it's resource and just another good setup to use the last of our main deck Magistus monsters is to Crowley uh, the Magistus of Grimoires you can send one spellcaster monster from your hand or face up on the field of the graveyard to special summon this card from your hand and you can declare one attribute this card becomes that attribute until the end of this turn you can banish this card from your graveyard then target one magistus monster you control equip it with one magistus monster from your graveyard except a level four monster so really Ona and crowley really set up for the graveyard while endymion and zoroa helped to set up with the extra deck giving you that setup as well in just another way to special summon a resource by sending another spellcaster monster from your hand or face on the field of the graveyard that's why we're also running the perform age engine because they do have a pretty good Good utilization in the graveyard so two copies of damage juggler and two copies of hat trigger and then the one copy of trick clown if you set them up in the graveyard with our spellcaster monster of the crowley you can get a special summon off of trick clown a search off a of damage juggler and then just special summon power off of hat trigger if you have plenty of monsters or if your opponent does on the field for you to use with the rest of our main deck monsters just being a hand trap lineup the engine works very very well with just a couple cards in our hand so we can save room for hand trap spots in the deck as well so three copies of ash blossom two copies of effect failure and two copies of nibiru as well i'm going for a cross out designator lineup for the spells as well so having targets that we can use against our opponent always comes in handy with that spell also 
for the spells, I run three copies of Trismegistus. The first time each Magistus monster equipped with an equip card be destroyed by battle each turn. It's not destroyed. You can only use one of the following effects of Trismegistus per turn. Only once that turn. During your main phase, you can special summon one level four spellcaster from your hand, just extending your resources on the field. And you can send this phase of card to the graveyard to special summon any number of Magistus monsters with different names from your hand. So you have an investment for a special summon depending on if you have enough in your hand to make use of with this spell. And it's more of a protection play as well. Also, so it can be used for send power off of Crowley or Endymion. So that's why we're running three, even though it really doesn't give us much of a search for the deck. It just gives us more of a special summon setup. Also running two copies of Magistus Vritra with this card. Target one level four lower Magistus monster in the graveyard. Special summon it. If a Magistus card in your spell and trap card zone would be destroyed by your opponent's card effect, you can banish this card from your graveyard instead. You can use this effect of Vitra once per turn, but it's protection. And then also just being able to grab more resources from our graveyard as well. And also protection for its banished play. And then also the one copy of Magistus Thurgy and the one copy of Magistus Invocation. The Invocation is the fusion spell that you run in the deck to go into our fusion monster i was the magistus spell spirit and then also with our magistus thurgy you target a magistus monster you control and you equip it with one monster except the level four from your extract so just a quick play way to set up another monster on the field and if you have at least one of each magistus fusion synchro exceeds and link in your graveyard you can equip it with one non magistus fusion synchro exceeds or link monster from your extra deck also this means you can also go for the link setup since we have have our Artemis, the Magistus Moon Maiden, and its needed arrow for its own play. I also run the two copies of Spell Power Mastery. This is so we can add our Endymion Magistus monster, since it does have Endymion in its name as well. And also the two copies of Triple Tactics Talent. If our opponent goes for any of their monster effects during our own turn, we just have draw power. And the more Magistus monsters we draw in our hand, the more we can utilize with Triz Magistus. And also the two copies of Cross Out Designator to use with our many hand traps. And the one Call by the Grave to stop any of our opponent's hand traps as well. And lastly, for the traps, just the three copies of Infinite Impermanence, just another hand trap lineup to make full use of in the deck, and another target if need be if we have Cross Out Designator in our hand. For the extra deck monsters, three copies of Artemis, the Magistus Moon Maiden. If another Magistus monster is normal or special summon, while well, you control this monster, except during the damage step, you can target one of those monsters, equip this card, you control to it, and while this card's equipped to a monster, you can add one Magistus monster from your deck to your hand. You can only use each of the effects of Artemis once per turn, and you can only special summon Artemis once per turn as well. But you have another equip play with that quick play spell I mentioned before, but still just the search power, just needing a level four lower spellcaster monster that you can make use of with Artemis to depending on any of these spellcaster monsters that we run in the deck, if they're the only resource that we open up. I also run the one copy of Selene, Queen of Master Magicians, for more of a spell counter setup for special summoning spellcasters back, the one IP Mascarina, and the one Apollosa to finish off our Link Monster lineup also. For our Xyz monsters, I run two copies of Riliona, the Wondrous Magician Witch Wardrobe. You need two level four spellcasters with different attributes to summon this card out. You can detach one material from this card to special summon a Magistus monster from your deck. Also, you can special summon from the extract for the rest of this turn, except for Magistus monsters. And while this card's equipped to a monster, you can target one effect monster your opponent controls, negate its effects until the end of this turn. You can only use each effect of Riliona once per turn. So depending on if you wanted to equip it with one of your Magistus cards, you gain the additional effect while it's equipped onto your Magistus monster and also the one copy of Nina Ruru, the Magistus Glass Goddess. While it's equipped, this equipped card can make up to two attacks on monsters during each battle phase. And then also with this card, once per turn, you can detach one material from this card to target a level four higher spellcaster in your graveyard and add it back to your hand. So recycle power, but still you can make full use of the attack power when you equip this card onto one of your own monsters. And then the one Bahamut Shark and the one Totally Awesome. I still do like this play with just all the special zone power you have in the deck. If you can get two and Demi on the field you can overlay them into bahamut shark and then grab a totally awesome to have another negate on the field also the one copy of varam the magistus divinity dragon and one zoroa the magistus conflagrant calamity if it's synchro summon you can equip one magistus monster from your extract to this card so depending on which one you equip you gain the additional card effect as well and then your opponent can activate the effects of monsters with the same card type fusion synchro Caesar link as a magistus monster card in your spell and trap card zone so more of a lockdown with zoroa but with our varam while it's an equipped card 
card, the equipped monster cannot be destroyed by your opponent's spell and trap effect. So one of the extra deck monster resources is one of the better ones to summon out normally in the deck, while the other ones are better equip options. And then also the one copy of Borlode Savage Dragon, just another level eight synchro monster that's very easy to summon out and then very easy to equip some of the link monsters that we get as an additional negate for it. And lastly, the one copy of Awas, the spell Spirit Fusion, a card while it's an equip card, the equip monster gains a thousand attack and defense, and then being able to target another face of monster on the field, equip this card to if you control to it. And if this card was equipped to an opponent's monster by this effect, take control of the equip monster. So a way to grab one of your opponent's resources also thanks to this fusion. But as for some of the go-to plays in the deck, once again, we have the setup with a lot of our many different Magistus monsters. When you summon out cards like Zoroa, being able to target a Magistus monster you control, equip one Magistus monster from your extra deck. So with this card, you could just grab one of the mentioned monsters, equip it onto your monster as well. And if it becomes equipped with a Magistus monster, you can then special summon one uh, level four spellcaster monster from your hand or graveyard in defense, except for Zoroa, the Magistus of Flame. So then this helps you to grab that additional monster from your hand, and all it has to be is a level four spellcaster monster. So even if you have one of your perform age monsters in your hand, you then at least have the tuner needed and a different attribute as well to be able to go into one of your needed monsters, like your Zoroa, the Magistus of Flagrant Calamity, being a spellcaster tuner and one non tuner. Using these two monsters, you can then go into your Zoroa. As as well, and if it's synchro summon, target a Magistus monster from your extra deck to this card as well. So then you can gain an additional equip onto this monster also. And then also having the additional lockdown, depending on the monster that's on the field, will also determine which one you may want to grab to equip onto this card also. But that is it for the deck profile. I hope you all enjoyed. Like I said, it's been a while since I've updated the Magistus deck, but definitely happy with the results of just being able to stick to a generic pure build for it. And as always, until next time, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And Kira Twig out.